Welcome to Verbal Pick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are every day. People like to welcome you all to the show. Uh, before we get started, I want to send my condolences to them ex's family as his untimely passing um, just occurred today. And I remember being on a video shoot uh, with them makes in Houston in Third Ward. And he seemed like a brother uh, who was comfortable uh, wherever he was at, uh, meaning him being from the East Coast and he's down South. But it, it, it let me understand that we are family no matter where you at. You comfortable. Wherever there's black folks on the planet, DMX was comfortable, bro. He was kicking in the H-Town like he was in his own hood. So, you know, that's, that, that's just a testimony to the brother's strength. But I want to welcome Marcus Mudd to the show. Brother Marcus, welcome to the show, bro. Thank you for having me. How you doing, bro? Pretty good. Um, we were speaking earlier, and you had touched on a point that was profound, and, I, I, and it made me ponder for a minute on the actual purpose of this judicial system as we were um, looking at some uh, clips of the George Floyd trial yes, sir. and how you were stating that uh, disagreements brought in front of a, a court and you have people to weigh right and wrong. But if you committed the act, no matter if you walk away from it, wrong was still committed. Absolutely. And how how do we how do we uh, put that moral code in the mindset of the people when we're up against we can to use the terminology of Satan or whatever who wants to keep chaos and confusion going? Uh, yes, sir. First of all, I'd like to also give my condolences to the DMX family and those who. Love the brother. Uh, to me, he was a brother with a, a big heart, you know. And that's all I really knew about the brother. You know, I didn't know him personally, but I can tell from his his work and his um, his obvious drive for life and the art that he put down and the culture that he contributed to that he was a good brother. So, my condolences. Yes, sir. Uh, this 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 judicial system is uh, not the problem. And the thing that I was kind of trying to touch on was that being from the streets, uh, brothers like me, we tend to have a mistrust for the judicial system. And the policing, you know, the policy enforcers of the judicial system are the uh, main contributors to that sort of distrust and uh, mistrust sometimes. And uh, you tend to look at the courthouse and the judge and the proceeding and the, even the bailiff and the court reporter sitting there typing. You don't like none of them when you go in there, you know? No. Because nine times out of 10, you are in there to prove yourself innocent rather than them trying to prove you guilty. And that's backwards. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no, in the righteous world, there should be judges and lawyers and attorneys and people who represent the, the accused and the accuser and things like that because human beings don't always have the same viewpoint uh, on the same reality. And there's nothing wrong with that. So when you have disagreements, you should have mediators to come in and uh, proceed for you uh, in your regard. Now, the way this judicial system today is ran and the way it's being used is, is, is weaponized against the former slaves and against those who just don't have a lot of money, you know, and uh, I just wanted to say that it's not really the judicial system and it's not really the form of government that uh, is the is the is the uh, problem? It's the people who are behind it, and 
people operate. The people, and and you made a, a point when you said uh, humans. Uh, I I know that in 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 past generations, they tried to put out the narrative that black people weren't human, even went so far to call us three fifths of a human human being. And that knowledge was passed down to different uh, generations of the colonizer, right? Do do you think that them not seeing us as human and was fed on that diet in their homes would allow a Derek Chauvin to put a knee on the neck of a black man until he's dead and keep it there after he's dead because he don't see him as human or as an equal. Yes. So uh, we also talked earlier about the seed and the plant. Yes, sir. Now you can feed a seed water and soil, but the only thing you're doing is bringing out of this seed what's already in it. So we can blame parents and we can blame media and we can blame the, the uh, society for some of these perpetrators but then the perpetrator also has a responsibility to recognize who and what they are before they commit these acts especially as adults because by the time you reach adulthood you should be having the consciousness about yourself and about the world to keep yourself in check from doing right and wrong no matter how much that water has been poured on your seed right 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 and and you know well and, and it sounds so simple to where it, it doesn't matter the color but can you do right or can you distinguish right from wrong and let's leave it at that of course, uh, right and wrong is the most simplest, just most simplest, profound truth there is. Truth is all you need. You know, it's up, down, right, left, uh, backwards, forwards. Is is it is what it is. Now denying the truth and reality is the person's problem. Right, but but if I treat you on the level of right and wrong or truth and justice then how can I say I'm superior to you? How can I uh, put my weight on you if I see you as my equal? How can I have privilege? You know? Mm-hmm. It's, exactly. Right. You know, and, and, and but maybe, and I'm just, just hypothetically speaking, if they were taught the benefit of Seeing fellow man as just fellow man, the the the, the 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 less stress you'd have from carrying the burden of racism that that you're putting on your your, your heart and your your inner organs and whatnot. You know, maybe you might find your time on the planet uh, uh, j- joyful. Right. Well, I mean, I would. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, no, I'm gonna say instead of spending so much time trying to come up with different ways to oppress someone. <laughs> right. It's, it's, it seems simple, and it seems like a, uh, a strenuous activity. And in these final days, it's outright a desperate way to live your life. But that doesn't change the people that are committing these acts, obviously. Uh, Donald Trump denied his own constituents plenty of opportunities, plenty of uh, ways to improve the quality of life for themselves individually and personally. But it don't matter because what they have in their mind, their heart, their makeup, and their tapestry is... I don't exist unless the black people are beneath me. Right. That's the problem. That's the problem. Now, it seems like... Now, black people are smart. And we understand this. But black people were more like, well, 
maybe in time you will come around to understand the bigger picture. Right? And at one point you had those who were saying, well, you know, maybe you should sacrifice yourself in order to teach a lesson to the colonizer um, that this is, first of all, it's wrong what it, what you're doing. And maybe he shows some sense of guilt or a uh, compassion after seeing the hurt and pain on black people's faces from the pain that he inflicted upon them. And that went on for a time. And then black people start realizing, well, maybe that wasn't the, the correct method because the sympathy and the compassion never came. You know, so so then it's like, OK, well, well, what do we where do we go from here? You know, what what's the, 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 the new course, uh, even though I'd say in 1985, when, when, when Mr. Farrakhan gave the speech in New York, it was over with then. But it, 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 it took time for some to, to, to come around. But if you go back and listen to that speech. Everything that was said then is prevalent today. You know, it's it's it's, it's amazing. And now with this justice system, and you know, you got the the, the lady she's blindfolded and she got the scales and she's supposed to weigh justice. You know, uh, I guess it took. A trial like uh, George Floyd's trial for the whole world to see how lopsided justice is for Derek Chauvin to be so comfortable to commit that act in broad daylight in front of witnesses. That means it's a failed system. Right. So well, uh-huh. now I'm about to ask you. So do you think the cause for defunding the police is that just? I believe that the police should be defunded and that the people who have been afflicted by the police that's causing the defunding to refund those people, the money they spent for service, uh, for, for protection for, for protection in the service that they were supposed to provide. Not only should they be defunded, we should be refunded and the whole new system should be restarted. Yeah. So no, I don't believe in just defunding by itself. I believe in also refunding the money. Mm, yes, yeah, that's powerful. That yeah, 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 yeah. People can people can see that. Yeah, because yeah. you know we know that the the uh, it, the the whole the police force started by chasing, catching runaways, or going after runaways. It's yep. the, the it, it started out. With, with, with racist undertones. Yes, sir. But but we were hoping that the badge meant something, the the honor meant something, the serve and protect meant something to where it would turn itself around. Yeah. So when you go to the store and you buy a product and you look at the box and the box tells you that it's going to do this and it's going to do that and you believe it because you even saw the commercial and as a matter of fact, one of your neighbors down the street got the same item so you buy it you spend your money on it and you run home with it you bust it open and you turn on the switch and the thing don't go nowhere it's the first thing you do yeah for real you box it up man take it back and get your take money that back damn thing back and get what you're supposed <laughs> to have for your money that's right or just give me my money back right yeah there you go so so you saying it's not the it's not the system it's the people not forcing the system to do what it is supposed to do well brother I did research on different types of government structures from democracy to uh, socialism to communism all types of isms and parliaments and things like that and it all boils down to whether the people who are in those seats of power are going to operate 
on a just scale, like you just said, with eyes blind, and you're going to take care of business for the commonwealth. Not for you, not for your pocket, not for prestige, but are you going to take care of the people's business? And the answer was always no in the last Mm. several thousand years. But it wasn't the system because the system flipped, changed, it was altered, you know, adjusted, renamed. It was never the system because when the new system came into play, it worked just for a little while until the wrong people got involved in taking care of the business. Then it was the system is this and the system is that and we don't want this and we don't want that and we vote against well I'm telling you over mm. and over again it ain't the system it's the people mm. that are operating the system mm. now wow that, that that yeah man yeah that makes a lot of sense so then do you think religion was invented or created in order to keep high moral values in order to keep the system afloat well, I was just coming to religion because it's the same thing, whether you're, uh, you know, a Baptist, Christian, Muslim, Episcopalian, uh, you know, use a Zoroastrian, use a whatever when you want to call yourself Hinduism, uh, whatever, man. It ain't the religion because all <laughs> religions was made to get man right. Right. But the man get the religion and do what they want to do with it. Paganism. Blah, blah, blah. You know, this, that, and the other. Voodoo. The man get it and twist it and turn it. Well, you know, pay, I shouldn't even say it, pay, because that's not a religion. Right. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a practice of some sort besides religion because it wasn't, uh, streamed from scriptures. You know, it wasn't streamed from, uh, uh, divine revelation. So I can't really include paganism or some of these, you know, probably not even voodoo, but it's all right. 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 Whatever the system is, whatever your practice is, it's not the practice, it's you, man, mm. that are ruining everything for everybody because your vanity gets involved. Mm. Wow, yeah. Yeah. Well said, but that's I mean, bottom line. That's the best yeah. Man, bro. You right. Yeah. Man got to get it right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Man trying to man trying to conquer a man. Yeah, and, and placing the blame off on the system that really don't exist until somebody uh, practices it, until somebody act upon it. It's like a thing sitting there. It's inanimate until the man pick it up and do something with it. You know what I'm saying? Stop trying to blame the dollar. The dollar ain't evil. The, 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 the fruit of all evil and, and that dumb stuff. Right. That's not the dollar. Right. It's the man that picked the dollar up and go purchase a weapon or something, you know, or go right. buy a girl. Right. It's the man. Right. And the woman. I ain't gonna leave you out there. We can't <laughs> leave you out no more. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. now you got a vice president and you're proud of that, right? Now you got to be responsible for the things that you want to do, and ain't nothing wrong with that. Right. You know what I'm saying? But we got to include you in this man ruining everything, also sometimes, you know. Yeah, my wonderful women. Yeah, yeah, that's hey, yeah, yeah, exactly. So then, wow. So then, before um, man, as far as uh, by the multitudes, I'm saying before man was actually walking this planet back when the Creator created Himself out of triple darkness, right? Then you had universal laws. Right, you know, gravity, uh, uh, motion, um, and, and so forth. I wonder why man couldn't just abide by universal laws of nature or what was already put forth and be in harmony and one uh, with the creation unless. It was like that, and something came and disturbed or interrupted uh, uh, that 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 most that process. Mm-hmm. Well, when the God created everything after He created Himself, it was to be perfected. 
it was perfect, of course, because there's nothing c- to compare him or his creation to. So in that regard, it's perfect. But the God is a masterful, divine being. So he creates a thing, and then he has in the thing the capacity to perfect itself and then to improve on it, improve on that stage and then constantly improve on that stage until it's perfected. And then once it's perfected, this is what the God does. He wants to go to the next stage and perfect that stage. So if you look at a baby coming into the world, it's perfect. It's nothing wrong. It's pure, you know, but the baby has to kind of fall down and crawl and, you know, learn how not to touch this. And, you know, the baby has to learn. So here comes a man. Man thinks he's master. Man thinks he's the God. He's Man thinks he is his own God. Because man has been without the knowledge of God for thousands, thousands and thousands of years. So what does man do? Man worships himself and says, I'm God. That's what we're looking at. You know, you can't tell Pharaoh nothing. You know what I'm saying? And Pharaoh's so powerful, he got the people believing that he is God. And you can't tell the people nothing that Pharaoh is not God. You can't tell them that. They believe Pharaoh is God. You know, so if we all going to follow Pharaoh's and Pharaoh's power is limited, his wisdom and his knowledge is limited. And on top of that, he's just an arrogant, you know, that's okay. Right. Well, well, so you can't. You saying you you well you you can't get you can't make imperfection a perfection. Yes, you can, but you have to go to the originator to do it. If you depend on Pharaoh and his people to perfect what the originator created, then you will lose every time. But 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 can Pharaoh? Go as high as the originator. If he submits, but does he? No. He can learn. He could, but if he submits, does he? No. No. Uh, that's almost like the 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 gin. You know, why should I bow down to man when yes, they made a and I made yes, a sm- fire with no smoke? Exactly. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, see, it wasn't the apple. It wasn't the snake that brought the apple. It wasn't Eve. It wasn't none of that. It was the disobedience. It was the getting off the path. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Once you say, God, who made it all, I don't need you. Forget your instructions to your universe. I'm going to run the universe the way I want to run it. You get off the path. Sin enters into the world. And when sin comes dead, there's no mastering in there. You can't be a master going to hell. But see, but that that was the and that was that was the flaw. I don't want to say well, I'm using the term flaw for lack of a better word. But that was the flaw of um free will. Yes, sir. And the reason why I'm saying it is because it was set up per- perfect, but some something what man wanted to know, well, well, what is hell? What is pain? Mm-hmm. What is free will? I want to know. I, free will, I got the right to know this. Uh, free will, I can know good and evil. So it says, well, Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge. And they know good and evil, and now man has become one of us. Yes. Knowing good and evil. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with free will. Free will is what gives you your God essence, your God quality. A tree don't have free will. But, but, But I'm saying, but prior to that, we only knew the good. Right. Didn't know the bad. So, so what lessons... Or what do we gain from learning the the bad, the evil? Well, that's what I'm saying. You can't master something when you only know one side of it. Right. You have to know the other side. There's nothing wrong with knowing what 
the, there's nothing wrong with curiosity right. and wanting to know and wanting to exercise free will and wanting to be like the God. You know what I'm saying? Right. For a time. We're all from God. Right. But is that for yeah. a time? Huh? Is that for a time? Like, no. like we, we, we practice and we learned, okay, now we know what evil is, been there, done that. Okay, let's get back to the other side. No, what I'm saying is, we saying, we tend to believe, we tend to think that wanting to be like God is something bad. Right. When we were created in the image and the likeness of God, and he said, uh, be ye gods, mm-hmm. just like me. You know, he intends for you to be like him. That's what he wants you to do. But you can't do it in disobedience. You can't do it out of, you can't just do it your way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. If, you got, if, if, if you're a coach and you got a, you got a, a star football player, he cold-blooded, he got all his natural ability. You know what I'm saying? If you can't coach him, then he can't master his game. If he think he know it all, just because of his talent and his capacity, because he's been given this capacity. If he think he mastered it all already, and he don't need your coaching, he won't master. Right, and we, you, you need guidance. Right, and you saying that God has the playbook, that He has the instruction. Well, He made it all. That's right. Now, now that's where you came from, yes, sir. Okay, well, now, now before we close. Well, some say that the Torah is the way, is the instruction. Some say, well, no, it's the Bible. Some say, well, no, it's the Quran. You know, some say it's the Veda. You know, it's, it's the, it's, you know, Buddhism is the, the correct instructions. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes, sir. So how do they distinguish or, or, or did it all come from one book? Yes, sir. It didn't come from one book. It's, it's scripture. That means it's a script. A scribe, a script right. is something that's supposed to come off of a big book or, or you know, come off of a, a whole story. Mm-hmm. And it's for you to uh, act out. It's not God. It's mm-hmm. guidance mm-hmm. from God. It's a script. It's part of a big book. So if you got a scripture over here and it's called Torah and one is called Bible, so on and so forth, if you follow that, you in good hands. Right. Now, let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. What if one say, you know what? I'm a I'm a I'm not gonna even look at none of these books, right? I'ma study the essence within me. I'ma study me. Mm-hmm. You know, my and, and and go by what my inner self tells me. Mm-hmm. Could that be could that suffice? Oh, and the only reason why I'm saying that is because this is twenty year twenty twenty one, right? And things were set and put in motion long before we even got on the planet, right? Been that done that nothing new under the sun, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So, uh, can is there a way? I cause I haven't done it though. I'm just curious. Is there a way where you can tap? And to your inner self, and by doing that, you reaching back, touching your forefathers, and and their through they through their vision of what they uh, seen or, or, or witnessed, you know, in in their time, since we you know, since you coming down the same line of divine in a sense. I believe it is. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, I believe it's possible. Yes, sir. I'm asking that because, you know, like you said, man, it's so many schools of thought out there and, and dealing with spirituality and man and, the, you know, the inner being and what not, chakras and the penile gland and melanin. And it's, 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 it's so much to where if we can get on a level to where we can encompass it all. And then move on that wise because uh, you can't get bored, and that should entertain. That should be entertaining enough of uncovering and discovering this the the universe and 
your connection to this universe. Absolutely, bro. You know, I don't believe that God is in one book or in one study. I believe that it's all scripture. It's all part of the major structure. In the major uh, book, if we work with it all together, then you would have God. You know, I don't understand why people are fighting. If you got truth and you speak that language and I got truth and I speak a different language, it's the same truth. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Come on. I, I can't get mad at you because you speak the language you speak or the dialect that you speak or that you have that accent because of where you came from. The, the truth is still the truth. If we can be in harmony with just the truth, then I can appreciate your dialect and your accent now and what you bring to the world. And you can appreciate mine because we agree on the same truth. We get messed up when we start saying my way is the only way because it's not. God is not all with you. God is omnipresent. You can find God anywhere. This is his universe. You understand? So he's not going to try to contort himself up inside one little small book that you got. Mm. It's not going to happen. You need to understand that your book is just a part of a bigger, major book. Like you said, it's scripture. Mm. And everything that is in you is in the universe. Everything that's in the universe is in you. The human body is a macrocosm of the universal, I'm sorry, the microcosm of the universal macrocosm. What's in your mind is in the universe. That's where it came from. Where it came from. We ain't gonna go too far. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, man. People, you're from God. Quit tripping on material. Come on, man. Yes, look inside yourself and connect with the words that you read. And you will be able to discern what's truth and what's not true. Because you're going to always want to read. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to just read one book. Uh, I humbly suggest that you read as much as you can. And just have a point of reference. So that you can discern what's good and what's not and what's truth and what's not. Because there is falsehood out there in books. But if you get your point of reference, then you can gather wisdom and knowledge from many sources even if it's tainted or if it's been tampered with you can still extract the good out of it and keep it moving without condemning the whole thing Mm, brother look (laughs) that was this show I'm enjoying bro look I want to thank thank you for riding through this universe with me on this thing we call radio waves throughout this yes, galaxy, sir. brother. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me, brother. Yes, sir. That that's yeah. This this one for the ages, bro. One for the ages. Marcus Mud, they talking production. Road Pick Radio. We out.